While I was working on this stage, so a, a quick thought came to me. Uh, we live in a world of technology and we are so bombarded with a lot going on that sometimes you, you get a notification and the first thing you're like, I'll look at it later. Does anyone do that in this room? Um, I did that several years ago and it would change my life forever. It was December 2011, a beautiful sunny Sunday afternoon when I received a text message from a random number saying, beware, fire awaits you soon. I was so used to such random text messages from my ex-husband as his way of controlling my life that when I saw the text message, as always, I ignored it. Later that afternoon, I received a text message from my ex-husband asking me to go get my two daughters who had spent a weekend at his apartment three months after I tried to get out of an abusive and violent marriage. When I got to his apartment later that evening, this is what awaited me. After I knocked, a young man I met in the hallway walked towards me and threw concentrated sulfuric acid at my face and body. While I screamed in excruciating pain in the midst of chaos, running for fresh air everywhere and burning in invisible flames, my ex-husband opens the door. And my two daughters hearing me knock fast and now they are hearing mommy scream outside the door. They come following dad and my younger daughter falls down in the pool of the chemical that spilled on the floor. All this I found out while I was in the hospital and my baby brought to me in dripping clothes. This is when I learned about a problem I never knew about. Just like gun violence is common here in the United States and many developed countries, Acid attack violence is very common in many developing countries where the chemical is so cheap and easily accessible over the counter, like Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Colombia, India, Iran. Nepal, Pakistan, Uganda, the United Kingdom, and right here in the United States of America. Acid attack violence is a premeditated form of gender-based violence where factory grade Acid, in most cases sulfuric acid, is thrown at the face and body of the intended victim. The intent of the perpetrators actually is not to kill, but to maim and disfigure the victim. The intent is to steal away from the victim their identity, often rendering them useless and invisible with no sense of identity. The victim is essentially rendered dead, yet they are not. Content of the chemical worth just the approximate of one dollar is enough to turn around one's life in a split second like this. When the chemical touches the body, it eats away parts of the affected area, including the nose, the eyes, the ears, and sometimes the entire face. Majority of the victims are women and children as a result of intimate partner disputes, 
We also sometimes have attacks on men as a result of land and business disputes. Uganda, my home country, has the highest cases of acid attack violence in Africa. While domestic violence is common and generally normalized in my country, I did not know that acid attack violence was a problem until I was a victim myself after trying to quit an abusive and violent marriage eight years ago. The reason is because most of the survivors lived their lives hiding their faces under the veil like that. In most cases, survivors end up in depression, which sometimes leads to suicide. I personally spent several months hiding my face under the veil, but eventually, I decided I will not hide this face forever. I unveiled my face. Thank you. After unveiling my face, I made it my cause and founded a nonprofit in Uganda, the Center for Rehabilitation of Survivors of Acid and Burns Violence, Ceresav, to mobilize survivors to unveil their scars and let the world see their faces. Since 2012, the organization continues to work with survivors, encouraging them to no longer hide their maimed and disfigured faces. So far, we have served at least 80 survivors, and still counting, we have lost many along the way. Acid attack violence has hit headlines for many years, including Al Jazeera, BBC International, CNN International, but it continues to remain an unknown problem in our society. The United Nations agencies are doing a lot through Sustainable Development Goal 5 to address different forms of <coughs> violence and abuse, right? But not a lot with acid attack violence. We have at least 1,500 acid attack cases reported globally, according to Acid Survivors Trust International, a charity in London. One may say that, well, only 1,500 cases, but because of the nature of these attacks, they are extremely underreported. And if one says it's a statistically insignificant issue, I personally say that every statistic begins with a number. I am that number. My two daughters who survived with me are that number. A survivor in Pakistan or the United Kingdom or Colombia is that number. Someone somewhere in a part of the world maybe is becoming a number. And when we put that together, beyond just the statistics, every number is a life. And every life matters. Thank you. Thank you. Understanding that every life matters, my life began the day I decided to unveil my face. Thank you. And I devoted my, myself to 
working to encourage other survivors unveil their faces. Well, I, love, I lost my facial identity. My entire facial identity was lost, yes. But one thing I can say is God saved me and preserved me. Through the pain and the injustices, God gave me the grace over the years to build resilience, to reconcile within and redefine my own identity. And I usually ask, what is your identity? My face is scarred and disfigured, but my spirit is not. Thank you. And that is what defines who I am. <laughs> and my question is, what defines who you are? Well, my visible scars today represent the invisible scars of oppression, violence, and abuse that I had to endure for many years. And my voice speaks for many survivors of the different forms of oppression, violence, and abuse whose scars are actually invisible. Over the years, we have been unveiling the scars of acid attack violence, one face at a time, like this. And I say that together, we can unveil those invisible scars of the different forms of oppression, violence, and abuse, one person at a time. Thank you so much.